Welcome everybody to what will hopefully be a long Let's Play series for a game that I love. I've been playing it since very early access and it has finally released 1.0 and that is the game called Creatura. It's a fairly simple game. I find it very relaxing though and so I just want to help showcase some of the features in this game while I go through my Let's Play to try and get to a very beautiful tank in the end. So I'm going to start a new one. I will go to free play. This will be my let's play tank. Uh, I'm not gonna mess with most of these things, but I am gonna turn off some of the starting plants. If you're very new to the game, I recommend that you keep those on just for your first couple attempts. But I'm just gonna start with sponges. That will give me my first animal, the flatworms. And then just algae, the most basic plant. And the first goal I'm gonna have is to basically try and get all of the different plants. I'm not going to worry about animal evolution just yet. I just want to get a nice selection of different plants and then I'll be able to make the animals that I want. So here we go. We've got two patches of algae it looks like. The first thing is how do you get different plants? There's two main ways, um, at least at the start. You can wait until you see a mutation happen randomly. That's what I'm gonna do for my first plant. Or you can just go right into messing with the DNA. And if you find the correct piece and change it to the correct uh, different codon, it will actually transform into a different species. There are also things you can buy, muta mutagens and things that will mutate things for you, but they are quite expensive when you're first starting off. So I'm not gonna do that. And so I'm just gonna let this run. I like to let it run at two times speed if I'm trying to catch specific mutations, because as we look at three, it can be pretty pretty fast. You might even miss one if you don't pause it in time. So I am gonna go down to two. I hope it doesn't take too long. If it does, I'll just be cutting out that part. Actually, it didn't take long at all. There we go. I've got my new plant. I took a clipping of it, and then the first thing I wanna know is what is this, and it's a reed. So. I'm going to I'm going to actually you know find these things so we've got our read I put it in the almanac this part if you want to read about it you can there's some information up here I haven't quite figured out um, I think this is health maybe but yeah I haven't figured that out yet when I do I will share that information with you but the big thing is I want to be able to mess with the DNA so the first thing when you get something new is you need to sequence the DNA and it takes about two minutes can't really speed it up even with time lapse uh, it just takes about two minutes so I'm gonna keep letting it run maybe we'll get another one to, to grow uh, if not after two minutes we will start messing around with our reed okay my research finished I didn't end up seeing any other plants during the two minutes and so let's go take a look at our reed I'm gonna save the DNA using this sort of triangle button and then I can open the folder down here and I'll be able to reference this DNA when I want to compare it to something else. So what I'll do then, I will take this. The circles at the bottom tell you how far away this plant will shoot the next seed where it will grow again. And you can, you can make it bigger. Uh, I personally like to make it zero. I like wherever I place my plant, it's just going to stay there forever. And you do this by holding shift and using the scroll button on your mouse. So shift and scroll while you have a clipping in your hand will change the seed range. All right, so I'll place this one. It'll grow. Let's see, it's just uh, two nodes tall, it looks like. Okay, um, yay, more chests. I think you get these every 30 minutes or so of playing. Uh, I've got more than I need. I don't I have enough money to, to pay for the keys yet. So let's get some more. There we go. And just a few more. This is just so, as I'm going to be doing some DNA experiments, I've got enough growing that I should always have some clippings to, to get. So you can wait and try and find some mutations to compare it to. I'll be doing that later on. But first, I'm going to explore the DNA of these. So I want to explore some DNA changes. And I have made a tutorial about some basics of this. And what I'm gonna do for now is I'm gonna try and find the color gene. And while I'm doing this, depending on how quickly I find it, 
I might uncover some other genes. So what I'm looking for are genes in the aliphatic group. There's a chart in my, in my tutorial that explains this, but I'm looking for aliphatic ones. And those are gonna be this color at the top here. So we've got a few at the start. We've got proline, alanine, isoleucine, and you know, there's, there's a bunch, there's a bunch of others. Um, and uh, what I'm gonna do is I know if I change it to the isoleucine uh, ATA, it's probably gonna give me like a bluish or a purplish color. So I'm just gonna try that with these. And as I'm going along, I'm just gonna mark them. All right, so we've got our proline here. If we change this to ATA, radiated, we'll see if anything happens. Uh, I was sick, it just died off, and I didn't see any major changes. So it's probably not that one. And so we're just gonna continue checking these other ones. Now we've got alanine, we will change this to ATA radiate and there we go actually just the second one and it lived um, so this is my color and so i'm gonna change the name here this is going to be color and it's confirmed i like to use the different colors to help me keep track of what i found but i'm gonna keep exploring some of these other ones because we're gonna find some interesting genes within this aliphatic group now i don't actually want i don't actually want this blue uh, read. That's, uh, that's not what I'm interested in. But I, I will want to maybe change the color of the read that I will end up using. Maybe I don't want this starting color. Maybe I want something else. I mean, I can do that now. I can always go ahead and do that. But let's continue exploring the aliphatic group. Uh, isoleucine is next. Again, I like to just change things to ATA while I'm exploring. In this case, it's not really going to change much because ATA is also isoleucine. So I'm going to change this to TTA. See it's changed to leucine now. Let's see what happens. It glitched, so it looks like it actually changed it to glycine, not what I wanted. I don't really see anything happening here. Let's change the color. All right, moving on. We've got valine. Let's mark it. Change it to ATA, see what happens. It was sick. I didn't see anything really happen either. And that's, that's the case. Not all of the genes do anything. So, you know, you're going to find some that maybe don't do anything. You'll find some that do something, but it's maybe super small. You don't even notice. Uh, but I'm just going to go through and check all of these that are in the aliphatic group, changing them to see what other genes I can find. All right, I found a really nice one, and this is why I was doing it. Because I've done this before. I knew this was going to happen. I found the gene within the aliphatic group that changed my species. So instead of waiting for my reed to naturally mutate into a seaweed, or I believe the other one I'll be able to get is a monocot, uh, I knew ahead of time that I could find this by checking all of the aliphatic DNA codons. So now I've got seaweed, uh, we'll start to sequence that, and I can't do anything while I wait for that two minutes. So I'm just gonna let my tank run for two minutes, and then uh, we'll continue to work with our reads, actually. Seaweed has been researched, so I'm gonna just uh, save it into one of my folders for now. Uh, we'll take a look at that later. While I was waiting for the two minutes uh, from my algae, I got a, another plant that kind of popped out. I think it's another reed. It is. This, if you notice, it has a different sort of stalk type. Now, here is where, if I compare it to my original reed, we can find this DNA codon very quickly. We don't have to just guess and check as much. So I'm going to scroll through until I find these highlighted ones. So this read has a different codon here. And so for these, I'm going to mark them with a different color. I'm going to come back and I'll have to check some of those. But let's see what other different ones we might have. There we go. Although it glitched. Hmm. All right. So I think this codon four, I think that is going to give me my different stocks let's double check though because when it glitches it means that some other genes have been changed as well so i don't actually know if it's this one that did it so tgg uh it glitched again but again it did give me this i'm fairly confident that this is going to be my stock type if it's not uh we'll have to check that later 
So we've got our stock type now. I believe there's just the three types. So let's change this to the middle one then and see if that also changes it. TAC, tyrosine. That also glitched. And then uh, let's change it to TTT. See if that does anything. Uh, but that switched it to TTC. So I think this is the stock type. Yes, we've got our three different types. We've got sort of the smooth one. We had our sort of, I don't know, fuzzier one that we started with. And then we've got our one with like kind of the thorns on it. And so the reason I'm finding all of these is so that eventually when I want to make the vivarium of my dreams, I will be able to go in, alter these reeds to look however I want them to, so that I've got the exact type of reed that I want to use. Let's go back to my reeds. There's one more thing that I want to check, and that is hopefully to get my monocots. Now, uh, up here, you don't always have to scroll through. If you click here, it'll bring up a list of all of them that you've, you've got. Finally, I found it, and this is why I should have just gone back in and, and marked it right afterwards, because what happened was, when I found it, I didn't actually mark it yet. So it was the next aliphatic genome after the one that I had marked. So this one is my species changer. Okay, so I believe the other one we can get, um, I think we can only move up or down one. So from the reed, we moved up one to get seaweeds. From the reed, we moved down one, and we should get monocots. So uh, it's currently GGC. And I tried ATA. Let's try TTA. Monocot. Perfect. It did exactly what I expected. I just went to the other end of the spectrum. Now, monocots very similar to reeds. Uh, I will sequence their DNA and then we'll come back in about two minutes. There we go. My monocot has finished sequencing. I can save it. I could always put it in there later. I'm not going to use it yet. But if we take a look at what this looks like, it, you can already tell it's very similar to a reed. It's just smaller. So not super important, but I am going to put it in my inventory in case I want some monocots later. All right, now, one thing I should mention as I'm doing all this, and I'm gonna try the DNA species changer again. You do not need to use the DNA editor. It's just how I like to play the game. You can wait for these things. They will randomly mutate from what you already have in your tank, and you, you, you don't have to use the DNA editor, but that's what I prefer to use, uh, at least in the early parts of the game, so that I can get these plants quickly. So let's just try one more. I'm going to try CCC. I think, though, that from the reed, I can only go up to the seaweed and down to the monocot. But let's just take a look. Ooh. It did give me something different. Uh, I think this is another seaweed, though. Yes, yeah, seaweed. I can just look up here. But now I've got two seaweeds. I'm going to... I wasn't originally planning to do this, but let's, let's try a couple more of these species changers. Let's see what else we can get. Um... Let's try CTC for one of these. Um, this is another monocot. I think it's just the same. Yep, nothing new there. So yeah, I'm, I'm fairly certain that the reed can only be changed into a monocot or a seaweed. Let's try one last one, though. Let's try GCC. GCC. Uh, that was another read. Okay. Yep. So I'm gonna I'm gonna stop with those, and I'm actually gonna stop messing with my reads for now. I have some in my inventory. Yes, I do. Now you're probably wondering when are you gonna get to the animals? I will get to some animals in a little bit, but again, you need specific plants in order to get specific animals. So I just want to get rid of all my reads in my tank here. The next plant I'm going to look at, the seaweeds, will actually get us another animal without even really trying. So I'm going to plant my two seaweeds here. And if we let this go, 
So the the difference here, actually, I, this is a good pause. Is this one just has a, a taller stalk, but the leaves are still just coming out of this first node here. So this type of plant is considered a short, simple leaf plant because the leaves are coming out from the bottom and the leaves are what are considered simple shape. We'll see some, some more advanced shapes later. The other thing that I wanted to point out and I'm glad it happened is you see this particle effect here. That means that a flatworm is eating this plant. And when flatworms eat this type of plant, they will eventually evolve into, I believe, horseshoe crabs. So if we just let this run, we're eventually going to get some horseshoe crabs. But uh, my, my whole point now is I just want to take a look at some of these seaweeds. And this time we'll wait for random mutations. So let me just take a few more clips. We'll check both of them. But we'll, we'll do it the other way. And so I don't know how long it's going to take me, but I'm, I'm really looking for either a complex leaf to emerge or a flower or fruit to emerge. So it will likely take me some time running at a speed of two in order to catch this, because if I go to three, it's going to be hard for me to keep up. See, I just I just missed. I missed one, uh, but that's OK. Um, so I'm going to do speed two and try and get some different plants from this. So I will see you back once that happens. After a lot of waiting, I finally found the leaf I was looking for to get to my next type of plant, uh, the lichen. It took quite a while though, but while I was waiting for this, I did find some interesting things. So I'll start the sequencing of that and point out what I've found. Uh, first of all, our flatworms, these are actually still the flatworms. Uh, we actually can't see the picture. They did evolve into the horseshoe crabs, so we've got those. I found a taller seaweed. Uh, if I let this run a little bit, we'll go to speed two. It's got leaves coming out of the first two nodes, but it's a very large plant as well. This is still considered a low, simple leaf plant though. And then I also found a blooming seaweed with flowers. And then I also did take a clipping of a different flower type. So that should help me with the DNA editor find that different flower type rather easily. Wowza. Uh, while I was finishing up that DNA sequence, I found this. I'm trying to clear away some of this algae. It's just kind of randomly developed out of this algae patch. I'm trying to get the clipping to see if it is something different or not. Ooh, come on, get out of the way, algae. This one's got to go. Probably get it. Nope, still still algae in the way all right yeah uh let's put this here for now i think it's probably just a different read um i've got my lichen i want to check that out and then what's this ah it is just a read but it's a very thick read <laughs> extremely thick so i'm gonna just put that in my inventory of my reads and we'll, we'll use that later the last things that i want to do are uh just check out some seaweed leaves so this is the one i want to compare it to so i'm going to actually move that one down into here now and then uh, wrong button i'm going to compare it with this one and i'm trying to find this different flower type i'm hoping most of it stays the same all right we've got this one and again this is still a seaweed even though it's called a blooming seaweed Make sure that I do that color correctly. I didn't. Uh, the color was probably a little different. I don't care about that. So we do have a number of different things to check. Flower or fruit? I found that earlier. Uh, okay. So it is different. Uh, I hope that that's not the thing should be one of these other ones so this one aspartic acid let me go reference my chart that's in the charged negatives uh, there's only two types for this I'm guessing it's not this one that's GAT let's change that to GAA um, I don't know let's see what it did Ooh, okay made that uh, quite a bit bigger. 
So, just as like the general size of the plant. All right, so I am gonna mark that one. Um, I'm gonna take a couple, oh, actually, the flower type looked like it changed as well. I didn't notice, shoot, I didn't see if it was glitched or what. Let's try it again. G-A-T, G-A-C, uh, G-A-A, that certainly looks rather large. <laughs> so, and again, I didn't look, ah, so this time my flowers didn't change, so I'm fairly certain, oops, I actually have to get one of these, fairly certain that this marker here uh, might be just the, the general size. I am not 100% though. All right, so we'll, we'll do some more investigations with that later. And then this one, proline. This is in the aliphatic group. Uh, let's change this to an ATA because it might have to do with the flower color. Uh, it glitched. Something else changed. It's a, it's a new flower type. New flower type. Okay. We'll save that for now. I want to keep working with the original, though. Or at least the original one that's close enough to this. So again, it glitched. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change this again. Hopefully it doesn't glitch. And it changes the flower type. That's what we want. It glitched, but it seems normal. All right, so it did it two times in a row. So I'm I'm thinking that this might be the flower type, and it changed it to the same flower type. Uh, let's try a different one. Let's try TTA. Uh, again, it glitched, but the flower type changed. So I'm gonna confirm that as as flower type. Let's keep just messing with this a little bit more. GGG. Again, it seems to be glitching every time, but just changing this one has been changing the flower type. So that's what I wanted to find to kind of end out my day here, end out the session. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start working with these lichens in the next episode, and we'll probably play around with the animals a little bit. But what I want is I want to save a nice... I don't like this one because it changed the color. A nice copy of my, my blooming. There we go. Up the bottom. We'll put that in there. I already saved a copy of my of my tall, tall one. I don't know if this one just got nice and big already or what. But I'm gonna sell off the rest of these and we're gonna start with our lichens next time. keep that one as well all right but i think that's going to do it for our first episode we took a look at some dna editor stuff how to get some new plants using the dna editor also just waiting to find random mutations we got our first new animal although later on i am going to start over with the animals uh, just so i can get them in the tank where i want them to be but i will see you in the next episode